Where are you showing now? Where can somebody go and see some um, up close and personal? Well, I'm working with uh, Suzanne Schultz at Canvas Fine Arts Gallery. Nice. Uh, which is a fabulous relationship I've entered into, and I'm very excited about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have my own website, which I had uh, created by a professional website designer mm -hmm. out in California. Okay. And uh, is that the one we have on our on our website? Uh, on I, our, on our, I on, no, I think you have Suzanne's. I do. Yeah. yeah okay. Yep. Okay. And. Um, uh, my own website has other work as well, but uh, as we transition, uh, my, my new work has just been submitted to Suzanne's gallery and will be yeah. up shortly to be on there as well. Well, why don't you email, email me your web, your personal, your I, website so I that I can that. put it on there because a lot of people go back and say, that guy a couple of weeks ago really was interesting and to be able to go back and, and kind of follow up on, on where you are is be kind, happy of, to do kind that. of nice, yeah. you know? Um, are you the kind of painter, are you the kind of creator that can... Uh, find 15 or 20 minutes here or there that you have to go, you can say, okay, uh, I got, tomorrow I got between 8 and 8.30, nothing to do, I'm going to go finish off number five. Um, I make time every day to do something on a canvas, okay. if not one, possibly more. Uh -huh. So I paint uh, seven days a week. You do. Some days considerably more time. Mm -hmm. And then there are other days that I spend uh, looking through a lot of art books that I have because I also studied art history and I look through for inspiration, or I'll go onto the web and I'll look at other artists and what work they're doing, which okay. I find very inspirational as well. What, what, what is it that you're looking for when you're looking at other people's art? You're looking to make sure you're, see, I, I, see I'm always afraid I'm gonna write that old classic over again. I think there's some of that, but I also like to see what other people are doing. Okay. Um, it's in some ways very competitive. Who am I competing with? Okay. For for uh, presence and awareness on sure. the internet. Uh, who am I competing with for potential uh, recognition of what I'm doing? Uh -huh. uh, my goal is to be a, a painter that's recognized, that's successful in selling and presenting right. my work and marketing right. it, and certainly an awareness of what other people are doing, I think, are a key ingredient, mm -hmm. uh, almost like any other business would be. So I approach it that way. Mm -hmm. Have you broken in anywhere? I mean, is there any banks hanging, hanging your work or anything like that? Uh, no, but I have sold uh, eight pieces since my first open studio, which was April of this year. You've sold eight pieces this year? Yeah. Congratulations. Well, that really is an accomplishment. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, Cambridge's open studios were in the spring? Uh, this past year, they were April 26th and 27th. And I had 29 pieces hanging in my home studio. Yep. Yep. And uh, from that event, uh, I sold um, three pieces to Newbridge on the Charles, which is the new Hebrew uh, uh, center their new building See, those are the place them. those are the places you want your stuff to be right in my living room is great you know but <laughs> but you know it's some place where where people are going to be able to walk by and go well, wait a minute sure yeah and then i sold work uh to five other individuals great. that have had been there and uh it was very nice to how, how do you like the open studios format let me just take a second to explain maybe to our friends out in being in that don't understand Open Studios is an opportunity for people to come and visit a community and visit the artist in their working environment. Correct. Where they are, you know, and where, where the magic happens. Sometimes there's a piece that's got a fist hole through it. Sometimes there's a piece over here that, that's half done or still wet or something. But it's a great opportunity, and uh, you're one of the artists that shows at home. How's that experience been for you? It's uh, been very good. Uh, North Cambridge has a very active and lively and robust uh, Artists Association. Yeah. Uh, what they do is uh, they have meetings on a uh, monthly basis through the nine months of non-summer months. Mm -hmm. They're very well attended and uh, they determine uh, how they're going to operate open studio for that upcoming springtime show. And so in signing up for that, some people do group shows within other yeah. types of environments yep. uh, and people that have studios will do that in their homes. Right. Uh, the people that do that in their homes are, uh, I think, very surprised at the type of traffic and, and people that they get to meet. Right. People are very curious to meet the artists, to mm -hmm. see the type of work that they're doing, ask questions about the art. Yeah. Uh, so it's 
a wonderful learning experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned as much as people were asking me questions about right. why I created things the way I did. So it was, it was a lot of fun and uh, very informative. Right. And plus, the other thing I think you get at, at, at a home studio that you don't get at the group shows is that there's that carnival buzz. Ah, carnival might not be the right word to use, but that, that all kinds of things going on at once thing. But when you walk into somebody's home or into their studio, that's an isolated atmosphere. Yes. I mean, the subject now is Steve in his work. And well, it was, there was a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. And the energy was that uh, I, I wanted my studio to be somewhat neat, but you know, there were still some paintbrushes lying around. There were some unfinished canvases. And so it, it, it was nice to have people come in and see this is a real mm -hmm. working space. Here's yeah. a person that's well, really that's involved important. in that. Yeah. Yeah, as we have, we've, we've put a gallery into one of our sections of our house. And then the work area is there too. So you can come in and you can see the work area, but over here is kind of like a little finished I like that area. Idea. You know, we have this, all the kids are gone. I've <laughs> got <laughs> all these rooms, you don't know what to do with. But we kind of like did that, you know, so it, it makes for uh, both kind of things, which, yes. is, which is fun. Ours is coming up in November. And, uh, and we're really excited about it. Like I was saying earlier, 90 artists, 40 home studios. Yeah, uh, Cambridge, the North Cambridge is not uh, quite that large. Mm. How many years have they been doing it? I think it's uh, last year, uh, this year was the 10th anniversary. Congratulations, that's, that's fabulous. Are there any pieces you're working on right now that you're thinking about? Uh, yes, I am. I'm working on two that are very nearing completion. Um, I've just ordered some mm. uh, additional canvas at the new sizes I yep. described earlier. Yep. Um, they should be ready in the next week or so, and uh, I'll start on those. Here's, here's a question that came to mind while we, while we were talking about your process um, and, and how you jump to piece to piece. Do, do you have to force yourself to wait for pieces to dry before you can go back to them for the fear of, of crossing that blue and that, and that red and having that unwanted? If I've created some areas within the painting that to me are sacrosanct that I don't want to disturb yeah. the relationship of color or shape or texture, then I'm reluctant to go back and disturb that, and I won't. But if there are other areas of the painting that can be worked and they're dry, I will go back and work those areas. Okay. So I'm, I'm sensitive to that process. Yeah, because I know for, for me, for the, for, for the oils that I do, I have to wait a week and a half for the base to dry. Have you tried uh, water-based oils? No, I haven't. Uh, I should. Well, yeah, I was I wondering love, if you had. I'd no, I, I, I love, I love the thickness. I love the, I love the texture. I use the paint itself for texture, you know. And I, I get yeah. it, and I, I mix it, and I, and I get it to where, where it has this thing that it has to dry. And then I go in with the fine brush and start to manipulate the color. But I have to wait till it dries, and that's always been very frustrating for me. Yeah, an acrylic person doesn't have that I know limitation. They I know they don't. <laughs> I know they. I know that's that seems very very. Well, I want to thank you very very much for coming in. It's it's a pleasure. Please feel free to call up and or have Susan get through to us anytime you want to come back. I will back. do that. It, it's it's a great uh, pleasure. Now, maybe next time we can get you. To sure. Bring in a piece because, like I said, you see the it's, it's kind of like doesn't. You can see the beautiful colors and stuff, but you got to see it up front. Okay. Stephen, thank you very Glenn, much for thank being Thank you very here. much. I it was really a pleasure. I appreciate it. Okay.